Thank you, you, and good afternoon, everybody. So we will run this in the way that I will do the presentation, and Mark will ship in when I miss, miss the, some, too many key aspects. And that also have the added benefits that you are not getting too tired of my voice, hearing Mark also a little bit. Right. So is it, do we have a pointer here? This is probably familiar to m many of you. This is the processes involved in oral drug absorption. You, so it goes from uh, that you, your formulation releases the drug, it gets dissolved in the gastrointestinal fluids. The drug then in, in solution could be degraded or perhaps complex bound by, by components of the GI tract. And then you have a permeation of the gut wall. You may ha have some metabolism in that step. and than through the liver in and into the systemic circulation. So in order to understand and predict the, the extent and rate of drug absorption, you need to look at all these different steps. And so when we talk about oral uh, or in vivo predictive biopharm tools for oral delivery, we are talking about understanding and tools to predict these different events and also to be able to integrate these different steps into to, to the end point, the amount and extent coming in into the body. And this project has a special emphasis on the impact of drug formulation and drug form on this process, which is primarily drug release and drug dissolution. But since these other factors very much modulate the influence of drug form formulation, you need to look upon all these factors. So, I, I, I mean, I, I would claim we have a lack of scientific understanding and tools in this area. And I mean, we, we still are using this sort of beaker with a buffer and a paddle to, to sort of mimic the, the, the dynamics and complexity of what's going on in the gastrointestinal tract by means of drug release, dissolution, perhaps other factors like degradation. And it's not difficult to realize that this is I mean, not the way it should be, but that's actually how it's working. You go, go to the industry and look, at that, that's what we are still doing. And so, so clearly we have a, a, a great need of improvement. And there was actually a paper uh, out now, a commentary in May in your Journal of Pharmaceutical Science where two, two well-known professors in this area, Leslie Bennett and Malcolm Rowland, was making a commentary based on a work that has been done in Pharma, the in International Industry Association, where they looked about on predictive value <coughs> uh, based on, uh, to, to predict dose to man, uh, based on preclinical data. And they compared allometric scaling with uh, more, more modern P P B PBPK approaches, where you use in vitro data put into computer model and predicts. And uh, the, the, the outcome was a little bit disappointing because the more novel methods didn't prove any advantage of the old animal data-based allometric scaling. And their conclusion, one of the main suggestions why, why it didn't work better was due to the lack of understanding and predictive tools in the absorption part. That was their conclusion. And also especially mentioning the influence of, of formulation here. So the, the, that, that, that was a very welcome comment in this context. So here, here, here's the solution to the problem. Uh, I mean, so the, the, the tools we are using very much ha have an old history, but while we've seen that novel drugs become more and more uh, low solubility, big, big, bigger molecules, more uh, lo low uh, lipophilic, etc while the, the toolbox of, of enabling formulations is also increasing by means of nanoparticles, um, uh, different uh, colloidal lipid-based formulations, et cetera, et cetera. And an, another aspect where, which has been sort of neglected is that uh, most of the models we use today is, sort of, is based on the physiological understanding of a healthy 
subjects, typically male, uh, whereas we give the drugs to patients and they might have an altered gastrointestinal physiology in some cases. Um, another, another problem here is that we, the, the, the methods we actually use, we, we, there is a, not a good understanding wh when we can rely on these methods by means of in vivo prediction and, and when, when, when we can't. And in some cases, the simple methods actually work uh, and there is also newer developments, but typically only having anecdotal va validation work. So th there, there, there is a sort of a general confusion and not a lack of structured approaches here to, to really see what works and in what uh, circumstances. And also lack of coordinated efforts. I mean, this area you typically see uh, perhaps one company funding a PhD project with one university. Th th that's how work in this area typically has progressed. And then you can realize that the progress has been very slow. So more united, coordinated efforts has been rare or, or almost absent. I talked so much to that slide, so I don't allow you to say anything, Mark, <laughs> on that one. <laughs> okay, I, I shape up. Uh, so the objectives of, of, of this project then is to d d provide better tools to make these predictions of in vivo drug absorption and that would be include d uh, using um, physical, define critical physicochemical formulation and f physiological factors that uh, determine product performance after oral administration. And, uh, very important, develop experimental and, <coughs> and theoretical models which can be used robustly to predict in vivo performance. But also taking benefit of the existing knowledge and data within industry to, to pull together databases and from that learn what is working, what is not working, where is the gaps. We don't believe that this is a, that, uh, that, that this is real. This, the nature of this work is really within uh, the, the, the area of pre-competitive, uh, that it is of pre-competitive nature, because the, from an FBI company point of view, this is not where we are doing business. We are not selling methods to, to use to make these predictions. And we typically, the work done in this area is typically published where, where you have this sort of one-to-one -one university academia uh, uh, collaborations and which often leads to publications. So, so that has historically not been a problem. So the, these sort of methods is used throughout the entire uh, development process really Fr from the early stages where there is a need to, on pretty crude methods, assess the, 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 the risk of taking a compound into further development by, by, by means of drug absorption aspects, and also to, to predict the need for more uh, challenging formulation developments. And that is an important guidance when, when selecting candidate drugs. 